Rastafari and moving forward just concluded um, the Black Christ Living Waters or Living Waters right, of the Black Christ. Right? Uh, I began to think about it a little after we recorded it. I said, wait, Black Waters? But well, ones might not properly or metaphysically really overstand that. But the key connection of the the, the, the Feast of Tabernacles, right, with the water festival element, with Yeshua declaring himself as that living water, and that any and all that are in thirst or, or, or thirsty should come to him. And that's in the Hoshana Rabba, the Rastafari Hoshana Rabba, in speaking on the living waters of the Black Christ. Right, and that Hoshana Rabbah, which is the seventh, right, which is Sukkot seven. Then we have Sukkot eight or the eighth day, which is that eighth day of the assembly, the Sementenya Gubai, where we gather together. And this is a very important um, word, I say a word pick right here, right, that gathering. Right, that, that that gathering. Now, there's a New Testament. The New Testament reading, right, is very very interesting for the Shemeni Atzeret. Right, the Shemeni Atzeret. I had wanted to have this teaching done from before, but I, I I was just tabernacling, right, and just dwelling in the abundance of His revelation, right, because it says that it, it says that the 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 the, the the spirit of prophecy, that is the true testimony of Yeshua. So when we are able to really see the, 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 the prophecy, right, both in I and I personal lives, receiving his water, right, for that thirst, for those who thirst, hunger and thirst after righteousness, right? Seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness. So these are the prerequisites for a good, right, a good upcoming harvest season, spiritually speaking, right, the spiritual, the iritical waters, right, remember, we're speaking about types and shadows in the Old Testament, so when we look at the Shemeni Atzeret and the reading that we have right here in Deuteronomy, chapter 14, verses 22, to chapter 16 and 17, right, for the Shemeni Atzeret. Let's just give an overview, right? You know, we want to go into detail, but I hope that the I then, right, will receive the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, and would receive the, the, the inclination, the, the inclination of one's will to, to read over this for the I self and to pray and ask for wisdom and for overstanding and and, and for one to fellowship with, right? But fellowship with him in spirit and in truth, and he will send to thee, right, who is to be, right? Um, but try every spirit, right? But this is why you must receive the Ruach HaKadosh, right? And, and it's interesting because water is a half spiritual element, right? I'm really thinking about this whole black waters, Right, the, the black waters are spiritual waters, but of course, in the Western Gentile sense, it has a negative connotation. But in spirit and in truth, we're getting to the root right here. So in Deuteronomy chapter 14, right, if we go from verse 22, verse 22 of chapter 14, it says, Thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed that the field bringeth forth year by year. So we've closed out one shana, right? That's what shana means. One orbit, one cycle, one year. And we're entering into a, we've entered into a new year, a new season. Now, the, the, the Shabbat portion for this uh, Torah portion is the Simchat Torah, right? The Simchat Torah, right? And the Simchat Torah is the joy of the Torah, the joy of the Orit, the joy of Jalor, right? The only law that is true, right? And every law that is true in one way or another reflects that, 
But in every law of men and people, it's just men and people laws and all of the laws of these false governments that under the guilty world is under judgment. This is why we have even the heavenly signs that be a witness. So be sure to check out Joel's prophecy, chapter 2, especially for the blood moons, right? For what's the blood moons and when the Shemitah, the Shemitah began on Rosh Hashanah, right? The Ras Hasana, which is the head of the year and the blowing of the trumpet. As Burhana Salasi, a.k.a. Bob Marley said, it could be the first trumpet Right, that blowing of the ram's horn might as well be the last. So this uh, Shemitah year is from this September, I think the 25th, to the September coming forward. So this 2015 year, the ending of this year going into the next year is very, very significant. But he has already given us the direct, the direct, the way, the truth, and the life in Yeshua HaMoshiach. Right? In the King of Kings and through the Black Christ, our Black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshi, in spirit and in truth. So now, going forward, because the race is important, that's the truth. That's the, that's the reality. If you can't recognize the, the invisible by the visible, then you're blind. So pray that he heals thy blindness. And Romans chapter 1 actually speaks to that. We touched on that a couple of vids earlier. But right here, focusing a little more to bridge this from the Shemeni Atzeret, Right? As we're moving forward to Simchat Torah, or yeah, Orit, Orit means Torah in the Ethiopic, Araya, right? Orit. And we're going to connect the, the Shemitic root to explain the Hebrew truth, right? Because the Ethiopic, the Ge'ez, is, is a, is, is the first language, is the pure, a pure Shemitic language that provides the roots that we need to true biblical Hebrew. Right? We said that before, we'll say that again, and we'll prove that. It was already proven by others. So we're basically presenting proofs from others with the inspiration of the Ruach HaKodesh, the Ayla Ayrid. Amen? So here, what is being said in Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 22, is really pointing to the time to come. We noted this right here, this, uh, this art by Wendem Alonso. Let's get a Let's zoom in right here and get a get a tight view of it. So what does art symbolize right here? Well, this is Moses and Aaron, right? When they struck that rock, when the people thirsted and the waters flowed, right? That living waters. So be sure to check out the Hoshana Rabbah, right? The Hoshana Rabbah. If you checked it out before, check it out again. And also check out the Hebrew for Christian site as well. Download that's some very good information. If you can print it out, you know, and get study groups together around this information to study to show I and I selves approved, right? Even though we're ears until we grow, right? Even though we're ears of, 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 of salvation, we have to grow in grace. But the key first is to be born again, right? And that begins with that repentance, turn away from your stray way, turn away from your stray way and turn to him, right? In spirit and in truth. The door to our Abba's house is Yeshua HaMoshiach. Amen. So here we're speaking on the Shemeni Atzeret, right? Atzeret Be'amarinya. Let's just show the Yota right here, right? We want to go at a lively pace because we want to do a part one and a part two to this, right? So here we had looked this up right here. So we have... This right here, which is speaking of that, it says Sebat Ken. Well, let's bring it up like this right here so you can see it in the in the split screen right here. So you can see the English as well, right? Um, so this is the Shemeni Atzeret, right? This is me speaking on the um, the Shemeni Atzeret, right? Or the eighth day. Sebat Ken, Besama'ab, or well, Womenfes Kedus, Ahadu Amla. Sebat Ken, Le'egaziaviher. Ye isat korbanin akarbu be smentenya wum ken ye tek edese guwae ye hun lachu le egeziavi harim ye meek at a lawena korbana karbu wana guwae no ye tek ba sera hulu at a dergubet. Now the turgum or the translation is seven days. Right? Seven days. These are the seven days of Sukkot. 
right, or Das Baal, right, Sukkot, or the feast or the festival of tabernacles, ye, meaning y'all, plural, ye, y'all, shall, I and I all, shall offer an offering, right, made by fire to Yahweh, he who be who he be, is our divine majesty. Now it says, on the eighth day shall be a holy convocation, right, a holy assembly to you, and ye, all of us, shall offer an offering made by fire. Remember the Old Testament, we have the types and the shadows and the fulfillment, right, the, the substance in Yeshua HaMoshiach in the Brit Hadasha according to the prophets, as the prophets spoke, to Yahweh, he who be who he be, to the sustainer, right? It is a solemn assembly, and ye shall do no servile work therein. Now, some are prone to look at this from the physical, and I pray that your, that your ears, your eyes, your, your, your five spiritual, right? The five wise versions will be, um, have oil in their lamp to receive this spiritually. So we are not saying that, oh, well, you got to call in your job and say, yeah, I'm not going to be working so forth and so on. Because it's, it's after the pattern of Levi. That's what the word says. I think we're in the book of Leviticus, after the pattern of Levi, right? You know, it's, it's according to that pattern, right? When we talk about the order of Melchizedek. Now we touched on this right here just to, okay, let's do this right here. Let's do this right here so you can see this right here. What's the verse that we will add? Okay, here we go. We're going to go into this verse, right, from the Metzaf Kedus, the Book of the Seven Seals. Let's bring this over right here. And we want to look at these words so you can see what these words mean. This is one program, Blue Letter Bible, I think is excellent if you're just beginning forward there, right? And we still refer to it, right? So it says, on the eighth day, right? So it says, this solemn assembly. So we see the words from eighth, right? Sementenya, and you should see it pop up over here. So we have Shemini, right? Shemini, right? Which means the eighth, eighth, and eighth, right? Afro Shemitic word there. Then we have the word 61, 16, right? And we have Atsara, Atsara, Atsoro, right? Let's bring it over right here, right? Or the Matzeret, the Matzeret, right? And it's from the 6113, the Strong's H6113. It means an assembly, especially on a festival or a holiday, a holy day, a solemn assembly or a meeting. So we see that right here in Leviticus, right? Leviticus chapter 2336, right? Strong's King James Version, and the Lion of the Tribe of Judah, the Book of the Seven Seals, right here, where we have these words right here, right? That says, on the eighth day, right? Besimentenyao Wim, right? On the eighth day, Besimentenyao Wim, let's zoom this in right there, and the day, right? On the eighth day, Yetek Edese, a holy Gubai, a holy gathering, Yehun Lachu, it will be right for you. And so here we see this um, as uh, we use it as a word pick right here, right? A symbolic word pick right here, that eighth day gathering, right? That eighth day gathering. Now, what moreover doth the word sayeth to us right here? Mm -hmm. See, Paul gave us, Hawari Apollos, he gave us the keys. Right? He gave us the keys. And why many of the Jews, just like some of the Israelites today, reject it. It's interesting. We'll, we'll probably have to teach on that in, in its own turn. But what we want to say right here is that when we get to the first reading, right? The first reading for Sukkot 8, or the eighth day of Sukkot, known as Shemeni Atzeret. And we showed you right there from the scripture where we find it right in the in the royal Amharic, the pure language, as well as the Hebrew, the Masora, the traditional Hebrew, the reading now, the Torah reading, was Deuteronomy 14.22 to Deuteronomy 16.17, 
That's the first reading. And then the second reading for Numbers 29, 35 to Numbers 30 and 1. So we want to cover this, cover as many bases, cover all bases, and give a basic overview. It's because we're coming up to the Vezot HaBaraka. Right? The Vezot HaBaraka coincides with the Simchat Torah. The Simchat Torah, which is the Shabbat, which is this Shabbat, right? Which technically could be the ninth day, if you look at it like that. The ninth day, right? And then leading into the 17th to the 18th, the Shabbat Bereshit, right? So we have the Simchat Torah, right? Which, which is the, for the day portion. The day portion is the Simchat Torah. And as we move into the Shabbat, it's the Shabbat Bereshit, or the first reading in the new Shana, or the new year, the new year of Torah portion reading and feedings. Now, it's very important to understand the connection of the Baraka, right, or the blessing that the Zot HaBaraka, or Deuteronomy 33 and 1 to Deuteronomy 34 and 12, which is to be read, that, that's the day reading. Right, today, basically the so-called Friday, right, that Friday reading in the evening, or you can hold off to the evening time reading. But now for the Shabbat day, it's Bereshit, or Genesis 1 and 1 to Genesis 6 and 8, and we now continue from year, as it says in Deuteronomy 14.22, to year. But notice what Deuteronomy 14.22 says, it says, Thou shalt truly tithe, that's the asarat, a tithe, a tenth of all the increase of thy seed. Now, a teaching on seed is very important because seed has various applications, right? The word seed has various applications. Now, here we are looking at it in the agricultural sense and in the agricultural context from the Belui Kidan, the old covenant, or the Berit HaShana from the Old Testament reading. But we need to pull back that veil. Mm -hmm. That veil must be done away with in the Black Messiah, in HaMoshiach, in the Bain Elohim Hayim, in the Son of the Living God. Right? That veil has to be drawn back. Because once that veil is drawn back, Right, let's move this over here because we touched on the water, right? That water festival, right? The water aspect, the black waters, and the water festival portion. And here we're speaking to the gathering, that gathering. Now we can see a very interesting connection, right? A spiritual connection between the old. So, where it says that the Moshiach he fulfilled the Old Testament types. Right, the types and 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 similes and and the Hebrew mythos. He fulfills that, right? As we in him are to fulfill, we being the body, that corporate body, of which Moshia Yeshua is the corporate head, right? The corporate head, and Abba has set it so. Our Father has set it so. His Majesty has set it so. Thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed, that the field bringeth forth year by year. So now this reading that we have here where it's speaking about the tithe, and if people are far off what they are to do, then thou shalt turn it into money, in verse 25, and bind up the money in thine hand, and shalt go to the place which Yahweh Eloheka which he who be who he be thy father shall choose, right? So this is showing how the tithe with those who are far off. Usually, if you're close by, you could bring, you know, the, the the fruit of the field, so forth and so on. But if you're far off, by the time it reach, especially from the old times, right, it would spoil. So you would turn it over into shekel or bur or into silver, right? And stay tuned for the silver coins. You know, I'm putting that out there so I'll be reminded to touch on the silver coins. In fact, um, I don't know if we can uh, show this right here, right? But the silver coins, okay? I, I, I don't have light on this right now because we had to get uh, 
you know, more current, you know, the, the uh, imperfect people, imperfect technology. So, you know, you know how this technology goes. So, you know, we're just using this carrier wave to deliver our father's message. Now, as we go through this whole section here, chapter 15 is speaking of the sabbatic year, the sabbatical year. This is the Shemitah year. Did you not hear? This is the Shemitah year. We're in the Shemitah year, right? Which is a year of release or the Jubilee year. So much more study on this, brothers and sisters. This is the time, and this is interesting how, but just by studying and seeing his revelation. Remember, the 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 testimony of Yeshua, according to the word, is the what spirit of prophecy. Right? And this is leading us forward to organizing I and I cells to fulfill his ministry, right? His service, right? Building the church, the true church of the firstborn, right? Seeking first the kingdom of Ha Elohim, right? And the key that they always leave out, and his righteous man or righteousness. But as the Rastafari, as I and I, you know, have learned from you know, the elect elders, righteous man, right? He is that righteousness. He is the righteous man, Isis Christo. So we give Isis, we give Isis I to I and I, Father, I and I, God and Father, the King of Kings in the name of Yeshua. Now, the interesting thing is you go through the chapter 15, it's a sabbatic year or the Shemitah year. Well, this is the overview right here. Then it speaks about the perpetual servant. Right later on at the end of that chapter, and then interestingly enough, we get to chapter 16, and this is for the Shemeni Atzeret or the previous. This is going over in a sense, chewing the cud. We're seeking to chew the cud on this, right? Yahweh has spoken once, this I've heard twice. How have you heard it twice? Because I've said it, put the word in your mouth, opening of the mouth, speak the word, hear the word, right? Now, that's something very interesting because the hearing. Right, the hearing is the hearing by way of Yeshua, the Mount of Trans Transfiguration, where Father overshadowed them with that bright cloud. Kind of very interesting. The Feast of Tabernacles, the water, right? It's it's, it's a water festival. The Baraka, the Barakat is for the latter rains. The Shemeni Atzeret is the prayer for the latter rains because we need that latter rain, right? Because the harvest time is coming up. And that's connected with what Deuteronomy chapter 16 says, the Passover. That's the connection right there, right? The Passover. So when you start to study the word, you know it was not written by just so-called man. I mean, it was not authored by man. It was written and rewritten. You know, parchments will wear out from time to time. So it was written and rewritten. But the author, <laughs> who is the author, right? And the finisher, the fulfiller, of our faith, right? Yeshua HaMoshiach, I Delamin. Is it not? Of course, for I and I are woe and amen. So we go forward right here and we have chapter 16 to verse 17, right? So we have Passover. So it's already pointing us ahead. So we are, right, when we, when we recognize that the Torah is I and I wisdom. Right? The Torah is our wisdom. This is why the Simchat Torah is the rejoicing in the Torah. Now, some of y'all might not know, right, that, you know, the Torah is our wisdom, right? And therefore, your joy might not be full. But hopefully and prayerfully, right, even through I and I preaching and teaching, but through His Holy Spirit, you will know by drinking that water, right, that living water, that the Torah is I and I wisdom. Here we have Deuteronomy uh, 4 and 6, right? Deuteronomy 4 and 6, which is kind of reversed on 6 and 4, where the Shema is found. But Deuteronomy 4 and 6, it says, Keep therefore Shamar, put a hedge about this, like a garden, like something precious. Keep therefore and do them. For this is your Hokmah, right? This is your Hokmah, right? This is your wisdom, right? Your Tibet, your Sophia, if we were to speak the Koine Greek of the first century, this is your wisdom, like we're speaking the English of the 21st century. This is your wisdom and your 
overstanding, your bina, your bina, bina in the Hebrew, right? Master Wa Bamarinya, your bina. Hey, remember Bain, Bina, build, the building. This is your overstanding, your building, right? We build upon this in the sight of the Goyim, right? Or the sight of the Ahaza, the sight of the, the nations. Not just the European nations, even the so-called heathen African nations, right? You know, it's, it's, it's our wisdom in the sight of the nations as the King of Kings so aptly demonstrated. That's why that Afro-Shemitic King of Kings brought that in-gathering in Addis Ababa. Right? And such freedom, right? To I and I and to even other peoples, the uh, nations, right? Other African nations or Gentiles, if you understand the context, which shall hear all these statutes and say, surely this nation, right? This nation, nationality, right? This nation is a wise and overstanding people right this nation is the wise and over do they say that about black folks this is why ziggy had to say what he said i don't know if he said that after he took a little ziggy but he says i'm jealous of the jewish culture right you know <laughs> what's the father said would happen right romans 10 and 19 and romans 11 11 let me just let me just share this with the eye I must share this with the eye. Sharing is caring. If you're willing to receive. As his majesty said, I like to teach what life has taught me, you know, to those who are willing to receive it. Right? Um, but make no mistake about it. Verse 19, Romans 10, 19. This answers, go tell Ziggy Marley. Right? But I say, did not Israel know? First Moose say, Moses saith, I will provoke you. To jealousy, who's Moses speaking to? The Gentiles? Right? Who's Moses speaking to? He's speaking to us, the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and especially to us, the kingdom of Judah. Right? Speaking of so-called Afro-Americans, right? Afro, Afro-Americans, Afro-West Indians, Afro-Caribbean, right? And to our ICN, right? Our Haitian people, right? That's what Judah comprised, right? The kingdom of Judah, the southern kingdom of Judah, that was faithful to David, faithful to the covenant to David. The other tribes have an issue with it. They had an issue then, and they have an issue now, right? That's why they clown themselves trying to clown his majesty. But it says right here, but I say, did not Israel know? First Moses saith, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people. The Chazars, they, they know. Chazar who? Chazar what? They only become a people because of our wisdom. This is our wisdom. So is the Bible, right, the best book for our people? If our people is called Yisrael, right, if it's some other people you want to run after some false gods and goddesses, then, well, it's not for you. You know what I mean? Keep, keep it moving. But to us, he says, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people and by a foolish nation. I will anger you. See, that explains why a lot of y'all sometimes are angry, you know, about the so-called Jews that call themselves Jews, right? And you think you have a right, but um, you really have to understand his word, right? Because if we did not, you know, uh, go wrong, right, you know, they would not have turned right if we, would, if we didn't go left. You know, we went left and they turned right and they took our wisdom. But, but that's what the curse of disobedience say would happen. Mm -hmm. So Hebrews like brothers preach it Continue to preach it but also recognize Right recognize what the word is saying right here In the fullness of it But, but we'll touch on that Yah willing what a feat What a feat that means in the forward Shlika Right now when we go through this chapter We see the feats of we weeks Which is Shavuot Which is the harvest Right and then we get to The feast of tabernacles again and then we get to the gift of the males. You see right here the Shemeni Atzeret, right? So far what I see in this uh, circle, you know, wearing the robes of righteousness, right? Those garments of righteousness, right? We have to get in our clothing, brothers and sisters, right? Is the males, right? Why is that? Why is that? And this is from the Ethiopian Hebrews, but why is that? Right? The true black Hebrews, the Ethiopian Hebrews. But why 
is that? Well, let's read the word right here, right? Um, to sum up this portion of the Shemeni Atzeret or the Sementenya uh, Gubaye, right? Sementenya Gubaye, Manalva, um, I'm reading, right? It's the gift of the males. The gift of who? The gift of the males. You see, the gift of the males. You know why some of these uh, Afrocentrics, RBG, and the rest of them, you know, they, they don't want to live by the the Torah of Yeshua. By the way, they wanna they wanna deceive themselves, right? They wanna deceive themselves. They don't want to man up. They wanna tell the woman, "You be the goddess." You know, you be the goddess, so forth and so on. You go forward and fight my battles, just like Willie Lynch said, right? But 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 we cast Willie Lynch into the lake of fire, right? So let's go forward right here. The gift of the males. Verse 16 says, three times in a year, in a shana, Rosh Hashana, three times in a year shall all thy males appear before Yahweh Eloheka, before he who be who he be thy power in the place which he shall choose. That's the Belui Kidan. In the, in the Berit Hadasha, it's in the grace, right? We gather in the grace which he who be who he be, Yahweh Eloheka, Eloheinu, I and I power, has chosen. And that is his son, our Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach. Amen. Right? So it's in Yeshua HaMoshiach that we gather, right? That we gather, right? In the grace, right? The place and the grace which he shall choose. It says, in the feast, the what? The feast of unleavened bread, right? That's the Passover season time, right? The eat in Jerah, the matzot, uh, so forth and so on, the matzah, matzot, right? And the feast of weeks, Shavuot, the Mekar Baal, right? And in the Feast of Tabernacles, Yadas Baal or Sukkot, right? The Moedim of Yahweh Eloheinu. And they shall not appear before Yahweh empty. The empty is like the thirsty, thirsty part. You remember the thirsty, thirsty part? Right? He said, if anyone thirsts, right? Come unto me, right? Every man, every what? Every man that said every woman, no, every man did it say every girl, every man, right? So speaking to I and I, when the most brothers, right? Every man shall give as he is able, according to the baraka, the barakat, the blessing of Yahweh Eloheka, which he hath given thee. You see the full cipher, the full cipher, the first part of this reading. Do you see the wisdom here? The first part of this reading is from Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 22. Let's go over it again.